in this framework. Okay. So now, first of all, you have to understand why Oracle has come up with this framework when there are so many other frameworks available in the market, right? So you have for the simple web application development, you have so many frameworks available now. J2E, if you go to take a J2E world, then you have Strut, Spring, Hibernate, JSF. Yeah. So there are all different kinds of frameworks available to develop web applications. Now, yeah. recently we have Adobe Flash, jQuery, and you know, uh, even various versions of JavaScript are also getting so strong that you can build web applications yeah. using that, right? Yeah. So now, why do you, why, why does Oracle think or invest so much of money and resources to get ADF out of the market, you know, out of the box? The reason is that you have so many frameworks. But those frameworks are available to develop simple, simple web applications. Okay, so if you have, want to have a simple, you know, uh, order capture application, so yeah, you just receive the orders from the user. That's it. So, that's all. so in that cases, you can use any of the frameworks. Okay, but you think of an example where you are developing something called as ERP. Okay, the business applications, right? The big business applications you are developing. So in that cases, in the same, in this world where the changes or the technology is getting eroded in two years, right? So the mobile phone you buy, buy today is outdated by the end of the next year, yeah. right? So the technology is changing fast, so fast, in fact, that you want to develop the same application and again and again, okay? So you have to redevelop, okay? This was the existence of an application which is developed five years back now, right? And going the, down the line, so the things will change in such a way that there will be no existence of an application which is just one year back itself, right? Yeah. So the life cycle or the life of an application, the web application is so small, that means that you have to build the application again and again with a rapid manner, right? Yeah. So there should be some tool available which, with, with which you can build applications in a very rapid way, okay? And okay. also, that's not the only reason. You know, the reason is, that again, the next reason will be that you should not build an application which is supported only in the desktops, okay? So now if you build an application which is, which can be run only on the desktop in a browser, then there is nobody is going to use it because today's market, everybody has a smartphone, a tablet, yeah. Yeah. right? So everybody wants an application which can be installed and downloaded from App Store and then, you know, run it in from the tablets. Yeah. So that's the way the world is changing, right? So you have to have a framework which, with which you develop it once and the same application can be deployed or used in a desktop, in a mobile version, or in a tab version. Right? Okay. So no matter what kind of a device you are using, you should be able to support it. Okay. Right? So that, yeah. that's, the, that's the direction in which the world is changing. So Oracle, has, Oracle also has to meet this requirement or the demands from the customers, right? So Oracle even just suit, if you have seen, right? So there is no other way that you cannot run the application in any other browser than uh, Internet Explorer. The application yeah. itself will open only in Internet Explorer. If you try to open yeah. it in Chrome or you know Firefox, sometimes it crashes. Yes. Yeah. Because it's it's built on very old technology, forms, right? And the forms yeah. is yeah, yeah. you able to hear me? Yeah, I, I can hear you, Rakesh. I can, I can very clearly hear you. Okay, great. So I'm saying that uh, forms is very outdated technology. Uh, sorry for that, yes. but yeah. Forms is an outdated technology well, it, it, which you cannot run. Well, I, I really find it very tough to digest this when somebody says Oracle Forms. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I didn't even understand. That's why I said sorry. Yeah, it's okay. Yeah, that's why I sorry. I know. I know. Because earlier, before my uh, taking up ADF, I was in mainframe. And okay. then mainframe, everybody was, you know, everybody was, you know, giving me the mainframe is already outdated. Why are you working on a mainframe? Starting your career, actually. I was starting yeah, my career okay. in mainframe training. Like, Okay. I didn't have a choice there, but I was in a big M MNC and then they trained me in mainframes. Yes. I also didn't yes. like it. So that was the reason because of which I moved to ADF. Okay, okay good. So I changed the company simply as that. As they trained me in entrance and I didn't like it. So I don't want mainframes, I want to move out. So I looked for okay. an opportunity and I got this opportunity. Good, good. Okay, good. so that's, that's the way, you know. So the people are changing, the things are changing, the requirements are changing, right? Okay. So. Oracle also has to change. So Oracle has to move the entire e-business suit, which is running on forms, okay, to the next generation framework. So they have tried to migrate from to from OEF to forms to OEF actually. So in 12 version of Oracle Oracle e-business suit, it is most most of the UIs are built on Oracle OEF framework. So that Oracle OEF framework. What is it actually? Oracle OEF framework, uh, Rakesh, actually. 
it's an Oracle application framework. Uh, just yeah. before this ADF version of framework, uh, there was there okay. something called as OEM in between forms and ADF. Okay, okay. forms to ADF migration is in between. There was an OEM technology. Okay. 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 So that's also kind of outdated now because it's also very tough, and uh, you need to have a lot of technology and setup then to get it working. So people are okay. not using it anymore actually. Okay. So, okay. So now Oracle has come up with the next generation ERP called Fusion Application. Okay. Okay. So the Oracle Fusion Applications, if you have heard of it, so Oracle Fusion Applications is released in 2010, and they have built entirely using ADF Fusion middleware. Okay. okay. So Fusion middleware, I mean that SOA, PPM, BAM, Bipal, everything together. Yes, yes. Okay. Yeah. And out of that, all the UI, okay, all the UIs are built on top of ADF UI. Okay. Okay. So now imagine, okay. I mean, if you are, if you have not heard of Oracle ADF, I mean, uh, Oracle ADF is a suit. There are so many forms. You know, the application is huge enough that yeah. if you want to build such an application of that magnitude, right? Mm. So in that case, you can imagine the workforce you need to employ and the, the number of hours, person hours you need to spend to get the application done, right? Yes. But yes. Oracle took it as a challenge and then they developed it in three and a half years to four years. They started the development in 2007 and they completed okay. it by 2010. Okay. Right? And they released the first version of ADF in 2010 and they gave it to every customer free of cost. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, it's not to every customer means whoever was existing using yeah. having existing licenses for Oracle ADF business suit, they got it free okay. of cost. Okay. Okay, just to try, not to yes. no, use for the business. Okay. Just to have a look and feel of the application, how the application okay. looks like. Okay. And they got very positive feedback and they're just continuing enhancing that. Okay. So that's that's a major application built using Oracle ADF. But just one question there, I mean, okay. See, you mean to say now yeah. it's like see all the e just for example, I mean I mean my company is using Oracle HRMS, it's 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 in Oracle forms. Okay, it's basically it's Oracle forms, okay. okay. And okay, uh, now, okay. I mean, the same Oracle HRMS will be in Oracle ADF framework. Exactly, yes. Okay, but it Fusion has not changed. Okay, Fusion, that will called Fusion? Yeah, I means whenever you migrate, maybe you know, whenever your company decides to migrate to, from Oracle ADF suit to Fusion, then it will be called Fusion HRMS. Okay, and just one more thing now. See now, uh, see my my application. The, don't think about Oracle HRMS. Okay, my uh, my project is having a uh, customized application which is built on Oracle forms and reports. Okay. Okay. So now, okay. if they planning to move that application into Oracle ADF, so it's like uh, the developers will do it. It's not the Oracle will give them uh, ready-made solution. So it's like we need to convert that Oracle forms into ADF framework. Correct, right? Yes. 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 Okay. Because you know, I'm just trying to understand where this Oracle ADF workers, with developers will have work. I mean, what kind of work will get? That's what I wanted to know. No, no. So there is no relationship between forms and ADF. So I mean, so I have a theoretical knowledge on forms, also how do you build forms and all. Uh, okay. Forms is entirely built on triggers and the PLSQL procedures, right? So you yes, yes. you don't have to use the extensive PLSQL procedures here, even without a zero without PLSQL. That is zero PLSQL also you can develop an entire ADF application. Okay, I mean, Rakesh, I mean, sorry, if I can ask you, I mean, what sort of work do you do? I mean, I mean, see, you said that you are working in Oracle ADF, so you develop applications in Oracle ADF. Yes, custom third-party applications based on the requirements and functionality given by the users. Okay, so, uh, and migration work, what you do? do? I mean, do you have any migration work in Oracle ADF where you have to migrate old technology to ADF? I mean, what kind of things you'll migrate to ADF? I mean, Oracle forms into ADF or something like that? Okay, so when you say migration, right? So when you are migrating from a different technology, we don't treat it as a migration, right? It's it's a fresh development from scratch. So you okay. say you have a forms existing forms application, right? And you want to migrate to ADF. Okay, so that's a migration project for the client, the customer, yes. right? But yes. we do what what work we do is called as development from the scratch because we just gather the requirements from the forms application, and then okay. just evaluate and then get it validated by the users. Say that okay, this is what the requirements we gathered. So are they missing anything? They say okay. or they sign off on that. Okay. Then we start development or design of the application from scratch in ADF. Okay. So we don't reuse or take anything from the forms application at least if it's a form. 
If it is a okay. OEF also, I don't suggest you to take anything. Okay. In migration project in ADF, you can say, no. for example, I did a migration. Migration as in, I developed the application in 11.1.2. Okay, okay. When I started the project, so that was the latest data developer available, so I used it. So okay. I found it just a little buggy and all that, right? So then I migrated okay. the version of ADF from 1.1.2 to 1.1.5. Okay. okay. So that's the okay. change in the version, versioning of the ADF and application data developer, not the versioning of the application. Okay. okay. You know, because so then we need to do some, uh, some, some changes. Okay. Okay, okay, that's okay. So that's the typical migration we do, but yeah, okay. you, whenever you change the version of the application, you can migrate. That's okay, fine. That's, uh, that's not a hectic job. I mean, okay. uh, you know, need to say the configuration changes here and there and reinstall yeah. something, but okay. the remaining all things should be plain. Okay. okay. And the next. You play the flow. So what are they discussing? Yeah. Okay. So, so Oracle has yeah. developed fusion applications. Yeah. Yes. So Oracle has developed fusion applications. So that was the major, you know, uh, proof that any application can be built using Oracle ADF. Okay. So no matter okay. how much big, it can be built at a very fast pace using okay. ADF. So that was the proof. Okay. So now, uh, so let me give you an introduction of that. So there is some background noise. I think it's from your side. Yeah, I mean, let me let me just get into a room. Just a minute. Just a minute. Just a minute. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, Shimon, we can go ahead. Okay. Great. Okay. okay so. When you talk about ADF, right, we are talking about ADF means that it means we are inherently talking about JDeveloper. So the JDeveloper yes. is a tool which is used to build or you know, develop ADF applications. So yes. And when I talk about ADF versions, the versions of ADF, there is nothing called versions of ADF. They are all recommended or you no, know, they are all given as versions of JDeveloper. So whatever the version okay. of JDeveloper you are using, so that is okay. the version of ADF you are using. Okay. okay. So the advantage of ADF and JDLP is that it simplifies the development and it's based on all Java enterprise and server standards. That means all the standards will be followed when you develop an application using this. Okay, and it also it also makes the developer life very easier. Okay, so you don't have to worry about so many things which has to worry otherwise. No, if you are using a JSF application or a simple JDLP application, you need to worry about so many things. Okay, at least ADF and JDLP will give you a will give you the freedom from thinking about the basic things, okay, so like connecting to the database, those kind of stuff, okay, the connection mm -hmm. pooling, application, you know, GP transaction management, those kind of stuff will be taken care of automatically by the framework in the best manner, okay, the best okay. possible manner, so whatever is okay. the best possible manner for that application, will they will do it, okay. So what mm -hmm. we have to worry about is only the business functionality and the validation part, or the UI, the way, the, how the way the UI should be laid out. Okay. okay, and the JDL gives you an end-to-end -end infrastructure where you can build, unit test, and deploy the code as well. Okay, so okay. it's a one-place tool where you can do everything. Okay. Okay, so this is about the same the JDL. Why the JDL tool is important because mm. it is the one in which you can develop ADF applications, and also this is the tool in which you can use for server development. So if you want to learn Oracle Server. Then you have to use JDeveloper only. There's no other way. For ADF, yes, you can use Eclipse as well, but you need to install plugins and all that kind of stuff. But if you're using JDeveloper, it's very smooth. Okay. Okay. And for under Oracle Server, you need to use Oracle JDeveloper. Again, for the web center, you have to use Oracle JDeveloper. And okay. JDeveloper ADF becomes a prerequisite for Oracle Web Center. So if you want to learn Web Center, you need to learn ADF first. Okay, for Oracle okay. to learn Oracle so you don't have to learn Oracle area, but to, if you want to learn a web center, then it becomes mandatory. Okay, so it's like web center, what is web center actually? I mean, it's, it's a web center is a portal development tool, no, if you want to develop portals. Okay. okay. 
then in that case you will use web center okay okay so you will develop business applications using adf and you can integrate the business applications into a portal like hosted sites using web center okay okay so this is about discussing your again the role of adf at oracle so this is what we discussed right so it's yeah. a development framework the fusion applications and used by thousands of developers in house and it is a framework and all that so adf will be a pure oracle technology for your customer so if you are your oracle if your customer is having an Oracle business suit and he's planning to migrate to Oracle Fusion applications, then you have to learn Oracle ADF mandatorily. Okay. Because, right? So because earlier Oracle Forms or Ebus suit was there which is developing forms. So any third party application they will obviously they will choose forms technology. But yeah, I understand. if you if you upgrade to Fusion, then the Fusion is built on ADF. Right? So any third party application you want to develop, you'll be using again ADF only. Right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So there is no other project, you know. So it will be very cost effective at the same time, easy to plug in. Right? ADF to ADF, you can talk easily. Okay. Okay. So this is how the fusion applications are built upon. Okay. So entire uh, entire AUI is built on ADF faces components. The data binding is used to integrate integrate interact between the faces components and the business components. Okay, so the business components are the one which extract the data and read the data from the database. Okay, mm -hmm. so this is on top layer and below it you'll have all the server components if required. Okay, the mediator, mm -hmm. people, the coming workflow, business activity monitoring, this is called BAM. So all this okay. part is below the ADF. Understand. Okay, so in this course we'll be focusing on this components only. So ADF business services, data binding and ADF user interfaces. And okay. we will not be discussing about web center as well. Not the SDO services. So okay. I will be discussing about only these three. Okay. Just a minute. Somebody is there. Yeah. yeah. Yes, sir. Yeah, 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 okay. So we will be discussing primary. So primarily we will be discussing about these three. Okay. Okay. So the early business complex data binding and user interfaces. Okay. So we will discuss how to build user interfaces using ADF UI, and ADF business components, how to interact with the business components using the data binding, and how to build the business services from the database schema object. Okay. So it's like the database. I mean, uh, ADF gets connected to any database. Not only Oracle, it gets connected to even Sybase and uh, MS SQL and all everything, right? Yes, yes. You can connect. That's what theoretically it says, but I never did it. Okay, okay. Good. But uh, but you you have connected to Oracle database. Yes, yes. Oracle database is mandatory. Yes. Yeah. Okay. So that's the main strategy for Oracle. You know, uh, they will provide everything from the uh, from the database to the metadata to the UI, yeah, yeah. so that the customer doesn't have a choice. You know, even though some are free, uh, there will be some complications for connecting. So it's not so yeah, easy. Yeah. You know, when you say okay. Sybase, uh, Oracle says that you can connect, but it's not giving information how to connect. Yeah. <laughs> so okay, so all the information, all the blogs, all the information will be that how to connect to Oracle database only. Yeah, so yeah, obviously, because. The knowledge or you know, the developers most of the times are used to Oracle XE or like Oracle database, you have tend to go to Oracle databases only. So that's how Oracle is making revenues. Yeah. Right. So that's the that was the reason behind the Sun acquisition. So now they are into hardware business as well. Right. Yeah. The servers from Sun, the software installed in the servers are from Oracle, the applications installed in the servers are from Oracle, the oh, databases yeah. Oracle, everything is Oracle. Yeah, that's how they got right. Java as well. That's how they got Java as well. Yeah. It's very, you know, magical. 
monopolic decision. Uh, yeah, monopoly. Yeah. I don't know. I don't know. So it has acquired what? How many companies in the last? So KD Advice. It has acquired all of this. Yeah, exactly. So they are all once upon a time competitors to Mercury business suit. So they acquired all yeah. of them and there are no more competitors now. Only SAP. SAP. Yeah, SAP. And, and, and SAP is developing even yeah. database, you know what I mean? So obviously, right, and Oracle is going so fast and uh, the customers are moving to Oracle even as well because they are providing from everything from scratch at this counter rate, right? Yeah. Right? So when you evaluate, uh, no, when you are into, take the such a decision, right, when you have many meters, right? So Oracle yeah. says that, okay, buy servers, I will give you database free and buy yeah. applications, I will give you Java free. Go on. Java free. Okay. Right? So Oracle is not building anything extra on top of it. So anyhow it has to build Java and anyhow it has to build to Java databases. Okay. But that's what it makes sense actually. Okay, fine. Yeah. So we are not into that kind of a thing. Okay. Yeah. So why do you have to use Oracle ADF again? So the ADF as I was discussing, explaining. So with Oracle ADF you can build applications in a rapid way so that it can increase the productivity and it's very easy to use. Okay. okay. And all the development whatever we do is all visual integrated. So that means you don't have to write code, you know, sit, sit in the front of the computer and write code for hours together, you know, and compare it every time and then make sure that it's working fine or not. So it's not like that. It's it's minimal of coding and maximum of declarative coding. Okay, so when I say declarative coding, either you drag and drop or you change the inspect properties in the property inspector. Okay. okay. So there is the choices and then you have to select the property from the property inspector to get the things working. So that's how easy it is. Okay. Then you don't have to write code. And it takes care of all the things behind the scenes. You know, whatever is required. The, uh, the when you do declarative coding, okay, at the end of the day, it has to be converted to Java to run it in a server. Okay, mm -hmm. and you have a web server. It, all, all it knows, a web server, all it knows is a Java file, a jar file, a dot class file, right? Yeah. So the conversion to this dot class file is automatically taken care of by ADS while deploying. Okay, and okay. So when it is when it is doing that, okay, as you are, it is allowing you to do only certain things by the means of declarative things. It is making sure that you are following the best practices in the JPU world. Okay. Right. So because you are not writing the code, okay, it is writing the code behind the scenes for you. Right. Yes, so when it is yes. writing the code, that means it is you can ensure that it is writing the best code for you. Right. Okay. Right. okay. So that's about uh, this. And it's again okay, standards based, everything. Mm -hmm. Okay. Uh, Oracle application development framework. Again, it, it again praises the ADF and all that. So I don't know how to praise it anymore. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so you can go through it on the slide. Yeah. All of that. No? We can do all of these things again, ADF. So it's an end-to-end -end Java framework and uh, adds value to the Java enterprise edition platform. So you can build web applications very fast, right? So you can build any Java web application using using ADS. Right. And also enables the developers to focus on the application, not the developer infrastructure. So this is what I said, right? So you don't have to worry about how to create database connection, database connection okay. management, transaction management, all that kind of stuff. Okay? I understand. And uh, yeah, so this is very important. Yeah. Implements the Java best practices and design patterns, including MVP. So yeah. what this means is so ADF follows, okay, let me explain the design pattern. So when you want to develop a web application, okay, so you, you, you before developing a web application, you need to change, choose a design pattern. Okay, so what is a design pattern? Design pattern is a pattern, okay, or a designing mechanism in which you choose how to build the application. Okay, so there are so many ways to build them. Uh, there are so many design patterns to build web applications, okay? Yeah. And out of them, all, all the design patterns available in the, I uh, know, available in the market, the best to choose them, or the most widely used design pattern is called MVC. MVC means Model View Controller. Okay. Okay. So MVC means Model View Controller Design Pattern. So this design pattern is most widely used. And ADF, when you build an application in ADF using Gator Rubber, it makes sure that you are using this design pattern. Okay, so you don't have to worry about uh, choosing a design pattern. The design pattern is already chosen for you, and you'll be by default, uh, what you call, forced to use that design pattern. Okay, okay. because it's the best. Okay. okay. So now, what is MVC? 
MVC means model view controller. So what is the design pattern all about? So the design pattern says that whatever the business model you have or whatever the okay. business model you are going to build should be okay. independent of the view. Okay. So for business model here it means the metadata encapsulation of the database. Okay, so in the database you have the data, right? So when oh, yeah. you get it to the middle tab, okay, for the processing, that should be independent of the UI. The view means UI, the user okay. interface. Whatever the yeah. user is seeing is called user interface, and that is yes. called view part of MVC. Yes. Okay. So what MVC design pattern says is that okay, build the model independent of the view controller. Okay. So no matter how the view, how the UI should look or will look, okay, okay. your model should be independent of it. And, and the view controller also should be independent of the model. So your UI should not be dependent on the way the model is built. Okay. okay. The reason is, the reason why the say it is that, the reason is that tomorrow if you, uh, because I told you right, the technology is changing. So tomorrow yes. you want to change the UI. So what is okay. important to us is the UI, the way the application looks and feels in the browser. Yes. Right. So tomorrow I want to change the UI. Now today I like ADF faces, but ADF is not developing so fast and in between somebody else comes up with a very good technology, UI technology, mm -hmm. in which I can build the application. But I don't want to take a risk of changing the model because all the business logic or validations are in place in model and it's working absolutely fine. So I don't want to touch it. But I don't yeah. I want to revamp the UI part only. In that case is what happens is or what can I do is I can just simply remove the view controller part of my ADF application and then I can plug in the new one in whatever technology it is. Okay. Okay. So if you have followed this design pattern then you can do it. Okay. So this saves you development time, right? You don't have to develop the model again. You have to just develop the view controller part. Okay, understood. Understood, understood, understood. Yeah. So I speak fast and continuously. So if you are not able to follow me, then just no, stop me. No, it's okay. It's okay. Like I said, it's clear. It's clear. If, if I need something, I'll stop you. Okay. So I see that you also speak fast, then it's fine. <laughs> yeah, but I really speak fast. That's a problem, no? <laughs> yeah. So that's the same problem I have. So that's why I'm just <laughs> wanted to mention it. Yes. Uh, yeah. Okay. So we are in sync. So not a problem. <laughs> yeah, I am very much in sync. Okay, great. Okay. okay, so what I mean by this same thing. So I told you that MVC, right? So you can use uh, model. This is model view controller. So this is wrongly mapped here. The model should have been here. The business okay. service interest of business services, the model should have been here. So these are the technologies you can use to build the model, right? So you can use mm -hmm. the Java, EJB, BAM, Bipal, Web Services. And in fact, Hibernate, Toplink, Portrait. So these are all Or I'll use Java. Yes, yes. No, no. For this course, I will be using ADMPC. Okay. Okay. 
So, but I'm saying that theoretically you can build. Okay, but uh, myself I have never never built a model using any other technology other than ADM PC. Okay. Okay. So we will be using ADM PC to build the model, and the controller part here is that you can use a stretch controller, JSF controller, or ADSC controller. So ADSC controller means ADM controller. Okay. okay. So this is the controller which will be used by default in ADF application, and you can build the UI. Okay, string, office, JSF, JSPs, ADF pages. Not only this, but you can use you know, all the latest technologies like Adobe Flash, jQuery. Okay, there are so many other technologies which you can use. Okay. So in this course, we will be concentrating on ADF pages, ADF, ADF controller, and then ADF PC. Okay. okay. Now this model will inject the UI. Okay, using this standard, this ADFM JSR227 is nothing but a standard actually, as okay. a worldwide accepted accepted universal standard. Okay, uh, to just interact with the model and layer because they are separate, but at the same time they need to interact with each other, right? So I told you that they are independent, yeah. but yeah. they cannot be completely independent. They need to interact with each other, right? So for that we have a standard to interaction. So because of this standard, you can plug in or remove any of the things, either the top or the bottom. You know, if you want to replace the model, you can replace because this is the standard which you are used to follow. This is a this is a kind of a mediator in between because of which we are able to remove the bottom most and then replace it to something else. Similarly, okay. if you want to replace the UI, you can do that. Now where does the database comes here? I mean this architecture, I mean I mean uh, where does the backend come from? You see that I think I'm I I I hidden it. So the database okay. is below the model. Okay, okay. This is the relational data. Yeah, that's sorry. Okay. Okay, so the model is built on top of a database or an external okay. database or package okay, database. Or package data. Okay. Okay, I understand. Okay, so now uh, these are all 11G components. Okay, so what are the different uh, advantages of using 11G components? So we have ADF task flows, ADF model bindings, business components. We'll discuss each of them in detail in the course. Okay. Okay, and these are some of the screenshots that like UI which are built on top of ADF. Okay, so you can have uh, this is called uh, some what is it? I this is how the app I mean, Okay, but this is how the application looks. The front end. I mean, the, this is how the users will look at ADF application. This is how we can build the ADF application. Okay. okay so, so this is not how the have, users look. I mean the. I wanted to see, I mean, oh. the client's view of the user, I mean, application. If you have built an application in ADF, I wanted to see how how it looks yeah. for a client. Yeah, this is the way. Which is that? These are various advanced. These are these the screenshots you are seeing on my screen. Are the screenshots okay. of the UI only? So the way that okay. it looks to the end users. Okay. Okay. So you can build this kind of rich application, rich UI. Okay. Okay. So you have hierarchy viewer here, you, here, this is called spider graph and I forgot the name of this graph okay. and this is a speedometer, box graph, a printer image, this is an image, bar graph, you, know, you can have all these kind of UIs, you can have all these things. So you can have you know, this pivot tables, Gantt chart, okay. this is a Gantt chart. Okay. For project tracking you can use Gantt charts. So you can build an IDF application on top of that. Okay. Okay, so it, this is all again IDF phases. Controller task force, whatever it is, so these are okay. various components of it. And so Rakesh, yeah, yeah. Uh, Rakesh, one question. So now, if suppose you have developed an ADF application, okay. So in any application, you need okay. to have reports, obvious. So say I have an application now, in Oracle Forms. So I, if I need some reports, okay. I use Oracle reports. Now, how do you create reports from ADF actually? Okay. So now. Forms is a technology, right? Yeah. Forms is a tool. Yeah. Forms, you can say it is a language to build an, an UI. Okay? Yeah. And you have Oracle reports. So what's an Oracle report? It's a data warehouse tool. Yes. Right? So it's not yeah. something which is which is kind of a development tool, right? So reporting reports, Oracle reports is a data warehousing tool, right? So if you want to have reports, okay, so you can integrate with Oracle EBI, Oracle BI. OBIE we call it as O B I E E. So that is yes. Oracle Business Intelligence Enterprise Edition. Yes. Right? Okay, so if you want we can use that and integrate that in ADF application. Okay, you can integrate OBI, okay. 
Okay. Understand. Okay. So, or else, no. If you want to have complicated reports, then you can use that. Or else, if it is a simple SQL query. So, what is the report? Report at the end of the day, it is nothing but SQL query. Yes. Right. Okay. So, if you, it's a simple SQL query, and then you want to create or display it in the UI directly, you can do that. Oh, okay. Okay. okay, understand. So, if you want to create any and PDFs and all the stuff, uh, PDFs as in what? Double downloading? Yeah, I mean, if you want to see now, you uh, see just for example, or uh, I, mean, uh, I mean, the user wants a report which will gives him all the uh, planned delivery. I'm mean, sorry, I'm talking about my application. If you yeah, if you, something yeah, yeah, if you want to all the planned deliveries for this particular shipping point or for this particular day. So he will download it from a PDF. I mean, when I use Oracle reports. So how how does it happen in ADF? I mean, so use OBI and download PDF or? Okay. So here there are scenarios, right? So suppose you he is the, he is displaying the data in the he is seeing the data in the UI and he wants to yeah. dis, uh, download the same data. Yes. Okay. So in that case, in that case, you can write code to write a PDF programmatically and then download it. Okay. So you, you that is possible in ADF as well. I mean. Exactly. Yes. Very much. Okay, okay. This is not, okay. Now we understood. I mean, Rakesh, I mean, I mean, I just, I mean, have confidence. I mean, you will teach me ADF. But one question here is like, I mean, how much practical knowledge will I get? I mean, will I able to? I mean, will when I start a course, uh, will I be uh, working on some development? I mean, will I develop a project where I'll be facing some technical difficulties? You know, what happens? Let's see. To be very, very honest, uh, Rakesh. See, I, I am. Uh, let me speak very honest. Okay, I don't want to learn the Oracle ADF. Here. Very simple. If somebody tells me learn Oracle, I mean uh, Excel sheet, learn Excel sheet. I will pay you this much. I will learn that I will go because I am in such a state of my uh, career where I am shifting just for uh, I mean some financial uh, commitment. Okay. To be more honest, okay. So what happens is I, I have learned ADF because I am pretty much sure because see, for you it's just a job. Okay, you will teach me. That's it. Okay. You don't have to worry. But it's for me. It's career. Because based yes. on this, I, I have to build my career because I have lots of financial commitments and everything. So you will just teach yes, me and yes. go. But to be very honest, I need to put my effort. So I'll. It's like it's not like a college or a school, right? Where uh, yes. uh, your lecturer will come and beat you, make you learn. So you don't have to yes. worry. You will just tell me, but I will put on all the efforts to understand each and everything. Okay. Okay. So what I wanted now okay. is how will I be prepared? I mean, I mean, to sit in an interview like. Will I be given any? I mean, you will help me, or I mean, developing an application because theoretical knowledge, as I told you, I'm already ten years old experience resource. Okay, when I sit in interview, yes. when I take it, when I take interview, when I can clearly make it out from the guy who's sitting in front of me, whether he's got theoretical knowledge or practical knowledge. So I need yes, somebody yes. who has got practical knowledge. The same thing applies to me as well. So when I go to some yes. interview, I mean, if I come to your company or if I come to some other yes. company. If I say uh, Sharif, okay. uh, ten years of experience in Oracle, uh, three years of experience in ADF, then this they will expect okay, this guy in this kind of architect level, so uh, this guy is good for me, so I should make sure scrutinize him so much, so before taking me. Yes. So what yes. will happen to me now? So I mean, how much you will teach me, like how much I'll get from this course? Okay, so I have an out of box question here. Actually, when you said ten years of experience. Uh, why are you still working? I mean, so why do you still want to go for a developer role? So why don't you go for a manager role? Is the first question I had in my mind. Because Very good. I'm I'm already a manager actually. I, I'm a PMP certified guy. Okay, so then uh, is it that after ten years also they will ask you for technical things? So because I'm in a phase now in which I'm the team lead now. Okay, so let me tell you. Yeah. My my phase is currently seven years of experience. I'm yeah. kind of a team lead, and the next role is a manager role. And my manager is doing for me that. No, he's saying that okay. By next year, I think you'll get a promotion. Okay. Yeah. So I become manager, right? So currently yeah. itself, I am doing little, I don't know, little less of development only. So what I'm doing currently is that I have a team of six members. I manage the team. No, I just give them the work, I take the work, and then make sure that I review the code, everything. That's what I don't. I'm not really doing any hands-on now. No, when I go to office, so I just do the work when they're stuck or when it is a yeah. little complicated enough to do that. Okay. I don't do that really day-to-day work. Right. Very correct. So if there is any complicated, if there is any complicated escalated issues in the customer side, then yeah, I make sure that I'm available there, and then I try to fix it as pos as fast as possible. That's what. But I mean, with seven years of experience itself, I am you know kind of shifting from regular day-to-day -day development activities to 
kind of a manager role. So with 10 sure. years, I think you are expected to do that. I mean, first question when I say 10 years, uh, yeah. my question is, why do you want to learn it? Okay. Exactly, exactly. Very nice. I'll, I'll explain you why. Because even you will face this situation, okay? So I'll tell you why, Rakesh. Okay. See, what happens is, see, yeah. I, I, I have been, uh, see, uh, I have completed PMP, you know PMP? Yes, program management program, right? So yeah, it's like project management professional, okay? So those guys, like, who yes, have yes. completed PMP, it's very rare, you know? I mean, it's like, so I completed my PMP, okay? When again, just okay. for the same, because I was around eight years of experience when 